And we are happy to have Harrison Bader join us here on the set. Todd Zeal back with us as well. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Uh, so you're a New York guy. I wonder, out of the gate here, any unique pressures playing in the town that you grew up in? The only thing really is just the, the mass amount of text messages I get from my friends and family, <laughs> which I actually do a really good job of uh, not responding to. Uh, but it's good because they've known me for a long time, so they know I still love them, but they know I'm focused uh, when it comes to, you know, performing and playing in New York, obviously. So I know you were a, a college teammate of Peter Alonzo at the University of Florida. Tell us about that relationship, how it started, and how it's evolved over the years. Yeah, you know, a lot of people have been talking about that since I got here. And, uh, you know, the same thing I've said about Pete has, has, has stood true, and that's he makes guys around him better. Um, and he was doing that ever since uh, he was a freshman, at, you know, at, at the university. And I think he does it by leading by example, the way he goes about it, his, his attention to detail, um, his approach against the opposition. You know, all these things just kind of, like, infect the clubhouse in a really positive way. Just going back to what you said about the text messages, there was no text around, but when I played in L.A., the – that was home for me. First thing I had to learn was how to say no. So I oh, yeah. totally understand. It's a, it's a lot. That being <laughs> yeah. said, growing up in New York, did you always want to be a center fielder? Um, yeah. To to talk to that point you said before that though, my you know my mom's a uh, a Sicilian pit bull we call her. So <laughs> so she does a really good job of uh, of handling that for me. Keeping so, people away. Oh yeah. Everybody everybody knows my mother. They know to uh, <laughs> to, to stay away. <laughs> She's the best. But, um, but no, to, to talk to the, that second point there, I mean, listen, you know, in, in New York, the infields, everything, they're, they're really not good at all. Um, so, so coming up, I kind of learned where, where I belonged in that field, and I never really felt comfortable playing uh, infield. Everybody wanted to, as a young kid, be Derek Jeter. You know, he was kind of our, our role model, if you will, on the field as a Yankee. Um, and, you know, I had a Yankee uh, household, so... Watching him, I was like, I want to be Derek Jeter. And then I learned very quickly the hops, the the unkept fields that I did not belong in, in the infield at all. Uh, so, I, you know, I was a center fielder. I was an outfielder at a very young age. Uh, my dad coined it best. He said there are no bad hops in the air. And uh, you I know, like listen, I, I just I just ran with the position and and made it you know uh, extremely personal. Personal. It's been um, a craft that I've been working on for a long time. As a player coming into this Mets lineup and this Mets organization, what type of player should we expect? out of Harrison Bader. What you can expect out of me is for me to play my game um, day in and day out. And, and my game is, is you know, extended at bats, um, obviously playing defense at a very high level, um, um, but also offensively, just, just tapping into my game, you know, wearing pitchers down, um, choking up if I have to, making box adjustments, um, and then getting to a point where if the ball's left over the middle plate, I'm going to do some damage, but, but not necessarily, necessarily seeking it. I think it's really important for players at, at any level and on any team to just play their game and be themselves. Um, and part of that is knowing who you are as an athlete and knowing what's going to put you in the best position possible to succeed and therefore do well for your team. So um, I'm going you know, to try to be a pest. I'm going to be annoying. I'm going to be a tough out. I'm going to drive the ball. I'm going to bunt if I have to. I'm going to move a runner over if I have to. Uh, I'm all around just going to try to beat my opposition with as many tools as I can present on a nightly basis, and we'll just kind of go from there. What was it that sold you on coming to the Mets? Well, first and foremost was the opportunity. Um, you know, I, I want to play the outfield. I want to play center field, obviously. I, I want to be in a position where I'm um, helping a team win on a nightly basis. I have some familiarity with uh, Mendoza, um, some familiarity with some of the, the staff behind the scenes um, as I've come across them, you know, in the Yankees and also in the, uh, in the Cardinals organization. Um, and I think familiarity is important when you're making those decisions. Was there a defensive center fielder that you have patterned yourself after over the years? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, two of my favorite ones to watch are Jim Edmonds and Andrew Jones. They had an impact on you? Absolutely. Jim Edmonds directly while I was at my time in St. Louis. Also, Willie McGee. Um, I, would, I could never leave one Willie. One of your ex-teammates. One, one of my great Isn't friends it? and great guys of all time, Willie. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. I love Willie. Willie? I love yeah, you, Yeah, Willie's the man. I like that. Um, and also Andrew Jones, more so um, when I, I, was, I was a young kid watching YouTube. So not directly, but uh, I don't know if he knows it, but I learned a tremendous amount of him on YouTube because of him, uh, because of YouTube when I was a young kid coming up. Harrison, great to meet you. Likewise. Best yeah. of luck with the Mets. Good to have you. Thank you so much. Good to you guys. Enjoyed it.